Hi, I'm James. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove lens flare from landscape shots. This is a common problem when you're shooting at sunrise or sunset. And like in this image here, you've got the sun just about to go under the horizon. And then we get these spots here. And the problem with them is they really draw your eye to them. But fortunately, there's a fairly easy technique that we can use to reduce their effect to the point where if you don't know that they were there, you wouldn't be drawn to that area again. So it effectively hides them. When you've applied the technique, you will be able to see the difference between that area and the surrounding area. But the most important thing is that the effect is reduced to the point where it is practically invisible. So let's just zoom in. So I'm just going to hit Z on the keyboard and then zoom in really quite close so we can see what we're doing. And there we have two spots close together. And the first thing we need to do is just change the image to black and white using a black and white adjustment layer. And this is a temporary measure just so that we can focus on the luminosity of this flare rather than worrying about the color. So with the color in place, it actually tricks the eye so it makes it much harder to fix this issue. So next up, we need to create two curves adjustment layers. So let's create the first one. And I'm just going to quite crudely drag the curve down like that there. So this is going to be our darken layer. So if I just double click on there, I can change it to darken. And I will just click back onto the mask and hit I. So that changes it to black. So there's no visibility on the mask. We're going to reveal that in a few moments. And I would also like that second curves adjustment layer. So if I just hit Control and J, that's going to make a copy. So we'll double click on the name there and change this one to lighten. And if we double click there, we can just drag the curve up so that it's lighter. And you can't see the effect because it has that black mask there. So that's not revealed. So no worries there. The lighten layer is the least likely to be used, but it just saves time if we actually make it now. It's just if we make a slight mistake and we go too far with the dark and rather than messing around on this mask, we can work on a completely separate one. Okay, so let's click on the darker mask there. And we're going to need to paint in white over this area so that we reveal the darker layer beneath. So just hit B on the keyboard to bring up the brush tool, then just hit D on the keyboard. And this sets the default palette colors to black and white. Just to switch between those, you can just hit X on the keyboard like that. We need white in the foreground, so we'll leave that there like that. And if we just click on this arrow next to the brush tip, and we'll set the hardness to 50% for this part, and we'll leave the size as it is, that's not a problem. And we need the opacity to be about 10%. So we can either change it here by clicking there and using the slider or typing in what we want. Or if you just hit one on the keyboard, that's going to change it to 10%. You'll see that there. Okay, so let's just paint in very carefully. There we go. So that section was really, really easy to remove. So now let's work on this brighter patch. So this one's going to be a bit tougher, obviously, because it's that tiny bit brighter. So... We've got a bit of a rim around there, so I'm just going to use the left square bracket key now for a smaller brush and then just pass around this area a few times. So look at that. How good is that? If only we could finish at this point, but now we have a, a few more steps. At this point, we just need to switch off the visibility of the black and white layer because we don't need that anymore. In fact, we could just drag that down to the dustbin at the bottom of the layers panel because we are completely done with that. You may wish to hang on to that in case you want to go back and work on the luminosity again. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so let's click on the lighten layer because I want the next adjustment layer to be above this on the stack and then go back down to the adjustment layer icon and select selective color. And then the thing about flare is that it's going to exist mostly in the reds and the yellows it's very rarely going to be found in any of these other areas. So let's start with the reds. The easiest way to find out where the, you know, the majority of the problem is, is just to play around with the sliders and just see what happens. So there, 
we can see we can add a touch of cyan in the red so let's not go too far somewhere around there so we'll look at magenta so yep there's definitely a bit of magenta in there and we're we getting anything on the yellows if we go too far it's actually causing a bit of an issue there so let's only go down a tiny amount so there we go and let's go on to yellows and let's take the cyan up because that's really going to knock it out quite nicely so yep that's good and let's take the magenta down so you'll see it is quite bright in comparison to the area around but don't worry about that at all because we have one more slider to work on there we go that's not too bad at all so let's close that window down and with that mask selected we're going to hit Control and i again and then i'm just going to use the right square bracket key and get a slightly larger brush and we have white in the foreground there let's change that to 20 percent by hitting two on the keyboard and then we'll paint in just over those flare areas there so let's just change the brush size so i would recommend taking a lot more time over this than i am because you'll get a much better result if you do take your time so you'll see here the blend isn't quite right so the next thing we need to do is create another layer and this one will allow us to sample the surrounding color and then use it in this area so that we can blend it further so just hold down Control, shift and n on the keyboard and we'll just call this one color so we know what it was for at a later date we'll just change the brush so hardness is currently set to 50 percent so i'll just take that down to zero and let's make the brush slightly larger i think yep that's good and then if you just hold down alt and then left mouse click we have a sample from there so let's just paint that in so what you'll see there is that it looks like we're kind of painting over so there's a really important thing that we need to do and that's change the blending mode from normal to color so then immediately we're not just kind of painting over the top of everything losing all that texture we're just working on the color itself let's get rid of all the red and the yellow so at the moment it is a bit of a patch isn't it, it there's no getting away from the fact that something has happened here but it's already looking a lot better so now we just need to boost the contrast in this area a touch so what i'm going to do is just make a really quick crude selection and to do that i'm just going to hold down control and then left mouse click on that layer and that's going to give us a selection of what we've painted in and i can just see there that i haven't painted over that area in the center so i'll just press Control and D to deselect, just paint over there, and let's try again, there we go, and we'll just go down to the adjustment layer icon, and we'll select curves from the list of options, and we'll just create a really basic S curve, let's try and get it as close as possible, so if we just bring that bright part, there we go, that's not too bad, okay, so that's our contrast, we'll just close that down, you can use whatever method of adding contrast you wish. There are obviously levels and also brightness and contrast adjustment layers. So just do whatever works best for your workflow. So just to finish off, we're going to do a tiny amount of cloning just to actually make it blend a touch better. So I'm just going to hold down Control and Shift N to create a new layer. And let's call this spotting. And I'm just going to hit J now on the keyboard. So, or you can click on the tool here and we just need the healing brush tool. So let's just make sure we have an edge hardness of about 50% because we don't want to lose too much texture at this point. So let's just take that edge there. So what I'm really kind of focusing on here is the edges of that flare. I just want to kind of blend those in more effectively. So that actually just kind of takes away that look. Let's just add a bit there and lose that bit there so there it's really not too bad obviously we know that it's taken place but let's just group these layers so let's just zoom out as i say spend much more time than i did and you will get a much cleaner result but there you'll see that has effectively been removed and if we just press Control and zero to look at the whole image there you can't even see 
that anything was there really and immediately your eye is not drawn to that area and is allowed to focus on the image the way that the photographer intended. So as I say, spend much more time to really get a good result, but that is basically how to remove flare spots from your landscape images in Photoshop.